Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. We have been giving you a series of messages and some advice. And the messages today are different than the messages perhaps of 10 years ago. And the reason is that the energy on this planet for you, surrounding you, has changed. And the changing of that energy has stimulated something in old souls. You take a look at who would be watching this program. A program like this, many years ago, would not have viewership. And that's a fact. My partner even tried things, thinking that many would be interested, perhaps, in viewing the channelings and the messages and all that. And yet few were. I'm here to tell you that this very process of watching, as you're doing right now in the media that you're using right now, is new. But what's truly new is that those who are interested is almost exponential now compared to 20 years ago. Something is happening to awaken those with a question. Is this real? Is there something more here? Why do I feel something when I hear the words or even the voice? That's a question even of today even in this program today. An awakening is more than just knowledge. You awaken, perhaps, to more light. And how would you say that? You'd say, well, yesterday I didn't have as much light, today I do. Well, that is not what really truly is happening. What is happening is you're able to see more. It's not about the light. It's about the the concept of what you now can see because of the light. And what are you seeing now because of the light that's different, let's say, than 10 or 20 years ago? And the answer is there is an awareness. You are seeing far more than you ever did, far more than you were ever told. You might say it's like you, you're looking at, a, at a, a large room that suddenly is illuminated more, and you say, oh, my goodness, this room is a lot larger than I was told. And look over there in the corner. There's something moving. I wonder what it is. Some will get up and go to the corner, and some will say, stay put, because it's scary. Just don't. It's, it's worked for you so far, hasn't it? So why move? And the others will say, I have to know. I have to know. I have to know. And they will go over and they will see that motion in the corner. Crying has even given a parable about this. And what they will discover is a grander truth, more of themselves, perhaps a, another door to another place. That's what's going on right now. And so it changes you. It changes your perception, your awareness. It changes also what you're like. And here's what I mean. So many human beings, including yourself, including my partner, are guided and shaped by what they enjoy and what they don't enjoy. And early on in your life, you draw lines of what you like, what you don't like, and they alter themselves slightly as you grow up, but you come out as an adult and you'll say, I do this, I do that, here's what I like, here's what I don't. If the room gets bigger, there are more things to like, and there are more things to examine, perhaps, and say, no, not for me. And that's what's also happening. You'll have those who are now awakening, saying, I no longer wish to do this or participate in this, and I wish to do this or that, because the consciousness is raising, and so are you. So your likes and dislikes are different. This particular message series is about light workers doing ordinary things and coping with the energies of the planet. And this one is about going to work. 
And it's different from the last one. It's different from, from a family relationship and what to do there. It's different from just an, an average of walking around with people and what happens there. And we've covered there two of those, and this is now is the third. So let's speak of that. Once again, the premise. Why are you here? <laughs> it would seem super simple. Dear old soul on this planet right now at this time, you incarnated on purpose. You were born for this time. Your purpose is to show and mirror the face of God, the face of spirit, the face of the creator, of your soul, to mirror that in 3D as you walk from place to place, to show those around you what it's like to have wisdom, what it's like to have benevolence and kindness instead of all of the other things that perhaps that they are used to seeing with individuals around the planet. There are so many humans invested in being a victim, the doom and gloom of it all. There is no hope. Being cynical about absolutely everything and everyone, and that is not a surprise because if you watch your media, they train that. In other words, everything is wrong with everything. That's how you become. But an old soul has a choice to change that. And that's what we're discussing. And that's what the last two lessons have been. Now we come to the third one, the workplace. The workplace is absolutely filled with situations. And they're almost endless. You are reporting to perhaps a place with other individuals who are working in, in team effort with you in different areas and different offices or different factories. For those of you who report to a place like that, you didn't choose them. Now you might say there are no accidents, but indeed, you didn't choose these. There may, you mean a, oh, no accident that, the, that they're there at the workplace, but you didn't choose them on the other side of the veil. They are there as a scenario for you to act with or interact with or whatever, but basically for survival you report to these places and question after question what do I do about this or that and so many of those questions are about authority what do I do about my boss I wish it were different dear ones but many times authority is not wise in fact there is a dysfunction in the personality and they enjoy being the boss and being the boss to them is ordering people around, or perhaps even worse, being the boss is telling people what's wrong with them. In other words, what I'm telling you is they're bullies. Not all of them. You might have a wonderful, stellar, wise boss that you love. Somebody who is in authority, you won't even call them a boss. You'll just call them the, the, the one you report to and you love it, but most often not. They may be there in that position because of their abilities, of, of their consciousness in the workplace that they have. They know more. They've been there longer. Therefore, they are the boss. But nothing has trained them for the wisdom it would take to guide others. And so they become a bully. This is very, very common. The bully is the one who just relishes being able to be in charge of somebody and tell that person they're no good or they should do better or bring them up and ball them out in some way to make them feel bad. And if they can make them feel bad, it then somehow gives that bully energy. You've seen it. Not all bosses in the workplace are this way. I may be talking to a boss. Do you do that? Probably not. Old souls tend to be a lot more gentle and a lot wiser. But this is the old soul in a workplace that isn't. It isn't wiser. And so many of you have to report to those places. So here's a message for you. I just told you what those kinds of individuals who are in authority, what they feed on. That means what makes them continue? What makes the, their bulliness even, even better in their opinion. And that is if they can get a reaction out of you. They call somebody in an office. 
They tell them they could do better, do this, do that, or they're not, they're not good at what they do. Be careful because they might lose their job or any of these things. Or just on a regular basis, they have a meeting and make you feel bad. <laughs> Does that sound familiar to any of you? That is quite literally a bully. What can you do about that in the workplace so you don't have to endure what you might say is low conscious old energy action? Here's the answer. Easier said than done, but that's why you're an old soul. Here is the answer. Don't react. You simply look at them. They may not like that. They may call for a reaction. And if you then have to react, react in a positive way. Think of something to say. Something to say like, that is all right, I will do better. Even if you are placating them, even if that, you know that's not what they want to want to hear. What they want to hear is you grovel a little bit, but you're not going to. If you don't react to these things, I'll tell you what's going to happen. They're going to get tired and they'll turn to somebody else, perhaps, or whatever, but it won't be you. And then what happens next is so interesting. If you're in a group of individuals that has a boss figure that does this on a regular basis around the table, and suddenly you're not reacting like everybody else, you're not sulking, you're not crying, you're not feeling bad, you're not going back later and complaining, others will come to you and go, what's up? What's, what's happened to you that, that would create something where you're okay with this? And you can say to them, no one can be okay with this. I just realized that it's the boss's problem, not mine. Just because they may point their finger and call me names or want to do something is not then what is actually happening. I know who I am, so I don't react. So I let them go through their tantrums and, and all of the things they do <laughs> that, would, that would enhance their bulliness but I don't react. Do you see what that, ha what, what, what that creates? What it creates is others looking at you. What am I telling you? Why are you here? To reflect the face of the creator. To reflect the creator's face and compassion. All of these things, everything you do will create a tension because there's light there. There's a higher vibration there. That's just one of the many things I would have to tell you, old souls, that you have to report and work in a place that are with people you never would have selected and have to endure the, the personalities. Don't react. Hold that which you have, which is knowledge of your magnificence, and walk accordingly. Don't make other people wrong. Just hold your magnificence. It's a message that's harder to do than some of the others. But you can. It's one of the reasons you're here. Can you reflect the face of God even in the face of a bully? I think you can. And so it is.